Good morning. So today's rainy day project, because it's raining here in South Florida, we have a cool front moving in. I'd say cold front, but it doesn't really get cold here. Anyway, we have an Acer Chromebook Spin 15 with the dreaded crack screen. I'm not sure if you can see those cracks, but yeah, I can assure you this thing needs to be replaced. And of course, it's turning itself back on. So we're going to have to turn it off. And I've already taken the screws out of the bottom. Now, I am taking my direction from ifixit.com because there's no shame in seeing how things like this are done. And that's why you're watching this channel, I hope, or assume. Anyhow, I've already removed the screws from the bottom, and the next thing that needs to be done, since I took all the screws out of the uh, perimeter here, is you need to pry the cover up, and it's really, really, really tight. Now, they have a plastic tool they recommend using. Um, I've had really good luck in the past using a simple paint scraper. I should probably sharpen this up a little. But what I've found so far is if I start at a corner, it's a lot easier to get a jeweler screwdriver in here. And that begins to pop the cover up. And then we can get the paint scraper in. Okay, and we just carefully go around and pop the uh, little plastic snaps up. Most of these things are made to be reassembled once. Okay. And they just snap together, so you have to kind of go around carefully and pop up the snaps. And once you get it started, it's usually pretty easy. And there, now we're in, and we look at what step two is. Okay, step two is actually prying the cover off. Step three is removing the screws from the hinges on the screen. Now there's three on one side, two on the other, and if you can look carefully, you'll see that each one of those screws has a tiny arrow right at the top, and that tells you that that screw has to be removed. So I'm gonna remove those, and we'll see where that takes us. Okay, five screws have been removed. Now the next thing they instruct us to do is remove the ribbon connector here. Now these guys have a little tab that pops up. You can see this right here. Once you pop that up, you should be able to just pick up. They usually have a little tab on here that allows us to simply remove the connector. And now we should be able to remove the cover from the top. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything else before we move on. They give good step-by-step -step instructions. If you look at the site here, everything has a pictorial, and then we need to remove, oh, okay, we have to remove a screw here, camera microphone cable. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera off while I get this figured out and we'll come right back. Okay, so I was gonna just pop these wires out of this. I, this may be the wireless card, but I decided to just follow directions, even though that would have been easier in my opinion. When you have something, especially if you've ever put a kit together, try not to second guess it. Or if you've ever assembled any uh, screw it yourself furniture as I call it, just follow the directions, follow them to the T, and it'll keep you out of trouble. So I decided to just follow the directions, pull the wireless card, pull the microphone, and the front should be ready to be separated. So I'm gonna do that, and then we'll come back and we'll look at what is marked as step five. Okay, I've got the, uh, the main part of the Chromebook separated from the screen, you have to kind of work the hinges and get the wires out because they are all loomed through so they don't get pinched because this is called a convertible and it'll flip all the way around so that the screen is touching the keyboard and this thing is on and I don't want that. So I'm gonna pull the battery out of here. I don't know how this got turned on. But there. Okay, now the battery's out. I should have done that in the first place, even though it does deviate from the instructions. You don't want this thing powered up while you're screwing around with it. 
All right, so if you look at the top here, I've got the knife, the putty knife in here. We're just kind of kind of work it around until we get the snaps to all come. You want to be careful doing this because you want to be able to snap this back together. So just carefully work the knife in like this and you'll see that the screen will separate. It's just something that you have to be patient with. That's not really my thing. Okay, come on. All right, let's go down the other side. There we go. All right, now you can see it's coming apart. I'm going to pause this again. Okay, so now as you can see, we have the screen exposed, and I want to bring up a point here, and that point is when you order a screen for anything, make sure to use the entire model number is taken off the product tag on the back. This will ensure that you get the proper replacement. And having said that, if the replacement I got doesn't fit, I'm going to scream. But it, I'm, I'm confident it will because they reference the entire model number in this. Sometimes the, the last character or suffix will just indicate the color of the case. But um, anyway, this is the screen that's cracked. And this is the replacement that I was sent. And it sure looks like the right one. So... The instructions kind of stop right here, but it looks like it's fairly self-explanatory. We got to remove this connector and we should be able to carefully take the screen out. Now I'm going to have to move this wire. Um, and it looks like there might be some tape, but other than that, I think this will come out fairly easily. So let me turn this off so you don't hear me curse. Okay, so what they give you here is the entire framework we are going to have to pull out, I believe this is the, the backlight inverter and whatever this circuit board is here, we're going to have to take all this wire out here and put this into our replacement. And once we do that, we should be ready to reassemble it, which just means we reverse everything we did. Uh, the instructions stopped here, so you're kind of on your own at this point. Okay, one of the things I'm running across is I'm putting all these back into the new screen and there was some uh, adhesive here that held this piece in. I, I think that's the inverter. So you have to peel off this piece here to remove, to expose the adhesive so this little guy will stay in place. So that's the first thing I discovered I really needed to do. Um, so now that should stay in here, which it had not been doing before. And you have to carefully loom these wires in because you don't want anything to get pinched when you reassemble this. So, I'm going to turn the camera off and we'll come back when I get the wire completely loomed in all the way around. Okay, so we got the last step taken care of. This connector may be a little bit of glare, but it simply pushes in and then we smooth down the adhesive tape. So we've got the entire wire around the perimeter, and we're ready to reinstall this. Now, the direction says to simply reverse what we did before, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So I am gonna put the uh, screen back on the hinges now. Yeah, I got a little ahead of myself there. I, I wasn't looking at the directions, but of course, we have to put the back cover onto the screen now. Then we can attach the hinges. Just wanted to make that correction. I'm sure everyone else picked up on it. Okay, putting the back screen, the back of the screen back on is a lot easier than getting it off. And I have the feeling that the case is going to be the same because these just snap into place. They're easy to snap into place, not so easy to unsnap. So I'm just going to make sure it's snapped all the way around. Uh, I replaced the backlighting in a big LED television. And when I was snapping it back together, I destroyed the LCD, cracked it, which really, really, really pissed me off. 
Now, fortunately, I found a TV on the side of the road that was completely dead. I replaced defective capacitors in the power supply, and it came back on, but it had blue splotches on the screen. And I had read that that's from defective backlighting because they used um, surface-mount LEDs on strips. And some of them had turned, the light had turned dim and purple. Uh, I don't know what happens to them, but anyway... Uh, they said you just replace them and the replacement went well had everything laid out like this connected it looked perfect snapped the ring around cracked the um, lcd took it back put it on the side of the road lesson learned all right so i had to pop the back off the screen because i didn't realize that when you reassemble this you have to put these wires into the hinges. There's soft rubber here, and they kind of feed in like that. So when you put it together, it doesn't pinch any of the wires. Um, I hate having to do things more than once, but you'd think by now I'd be used to it. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's a little gotcha I didn't see mentioned. So if you do this, make sure before reassembling and before clamping or clipping the, the screen back on, that you loom these wires this way. Okay, so I wasted some time here because I thought I lost two screws. I was very careful to use this magnetized dish so I wouldn't. Um, so I'm looking for the screws that go into the hinges here and here. And I finally decided since the hinges are a stress point that it would be probably better to take two screws that go in the back and put them in there. However, if you'll notice, I'm not sure if you can see that, but that little arrow there, there's no little arrow there. That's because if you put screws in here, when you go to put the cover on, you will see that, oh, the screws that go there actually go right through the cover. So that's what you need to pay attention to. Um, like I said, wasted some time, didn't need to waste. Okay, so I did get this thing all working. And I just want to show you something really cool about this thing is, this is what they call a convertible. So you can actually take this guy and turn it into a huge tablet like this. It's a really cool little device. And Chrome's, the Chromebook is pretty cool. You can actually do something now called Chrome OS Flex, where you can install the Chrome OS on any old laptop or desktop. Um, and this is great for something that won't run newer versions of Windows. I've taken old laptops and made them usable again. So anyhow, this is that's it for this i'm going to put this to bed and we'll go on to the next project okay as you can see we have a uh, we have a working chromebook now so uh anyway that's all there is to replacing the screen there were a few gotchas that uh that i encountered but other than that i think uh i think that concludes this so anyway uh, i thank everyone for watching I hope you've subscribed, and as always, I like giving back to the community that's given me so much. Thank you.